Yes, we are back with my favorite segment of the week, which is Strength of a Woman on Queen's Wednesday on Y in the Morning. I go by the name of Barry Moses, or it's Barry Moses on every social media platform. And in studio with me is a wonderful, a powerful woman. And uh, yes, I'd ha I'll have to read this. She is passionate about supporting people to maximize their personal and professional potential through mentorship and coaching and she has experience working with USAID in capacity building. She goes by the name Mercy Karibu Sana. Thank you, Barry. All right. Oh, so I should be using my mic. Oh, yes. Thank exactly. you, Barry. All right. So if I missed anything, Mercy, uh, you can look right into camera four and talk to the people. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, if I missed anything oh, in your intro. No, you mm -hmm. did not. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm sure as we go on, we will keep on capturing bits and pieces as we move on. All right. Yeah. Yes, so Mercy... Uh, your 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 cv is quite extensive you could say that uh -huh. mm -hmm. there's a lot to read in there but i'd like to start uh say in high school do you remember your life in high school yes i do uh -huh. um i remember i went to form one uh -huh. i found people who spoke english uh -huh. And I spoke the one from the village, so I wasn't really Which sure. village is this? <laughs> I'm from eastern part of Kenya. Eastern I'm from part of Embu. Kenya. From Embu County. Yes. Embu County is represented on Wine in the Morning, as always. We have done this. We have represented Embu. So if you're watching from Embu, please interact with us. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, I went to high school. Uh, I found, let me tell you my first day in Form 1. I thought the floors were so clean. And the lighting was so bright. I mean, I never seen so much lighting. Uh -huh. I was wondering, nights so look there like was, there was no power in your village. There was no electricity there in your isn't. village. There still isn't electricity mm -hmm. in your village. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, this is that time that I I call out the the governor, uh, but <laughs> we'll spare him <laughs> this time around. But anyway, so uh, this is your first time having an experience with electricity, the f uh, uh, cement floors. Yes, uh -huh. and thinking this is wonderful life, mm -hmm. and um, I enjoyed my 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 days in high school. Mm -hmm. Holidays were long because we couldn't wait to go back to school to watch TV. Wow, yeah. this <laughs> this is actually the first time I'm hearing this. Uh, somebody wanting to go <laughs> to back go to back. go back to school. Yes, because uh -huh. holidays is is going to the farm, mm -hmm. uh, fetching water. Mm -hmm. It's very hot. Mm -hmm. School, you were fed for three meals. There mm -hmm. was two teas in between. Mm -hmm. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in school? <laughs> All right. So you loved your experience in I high school. Did. All right. I so did. I'm guessing you were quite a, a, a good student, maybe a teacher's pet. Mm, I don't know about the pet, uh -huh. but I do know I, I really enjoyed schooling. Mm -hmm. And especially English. Mm -hmm. I, I loved literature. Mm -hmm. I loved poetry uh -huh. that most people somehow couldn't just find out how it works. Mm -hmm. I did. I, I really loved school. And mm -hmm. um, by there, I'm from the, the, the other system that did up to sixth form, so you can start guessing my age. Uh -huh. I went back to... Oh, just form. tell me the set books <laughs> that you guys uh, read so we can... <laughs> we can oh, set books. Yeah. We did The Burdens. Uh -huh. It's by somebody... Ruganda. Uh -huh. The Bardens. Yeah, the Bardens. Uh -huh. Then we did um, a book from South Africa. I cannot remember what it was called, uh -huh. but it was something to do with uh, the apartheid and the uh -huh. fight for, for freedom. But if you know, you know, the Bardens. If you <laughs> are in high school during this period, the Bardens, <laughs> you know. All right, so uh, you loved literature so much. You enjoyed uh, the English language. Uh, what about Swahili? I loved Swahili. Uh -huh, but not as much as English. Uh, you know, the old system uh -huh. did not really take us through Swahili. Mm -hmm. So we met with Swahili mm -hmm. seriously in mm -hmm. Form 1. Okay. So let me not see. Yeah, so I wasn't really that good in it. Mm -hmm. And I regret that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's what it is. It is what it is. You're here now. Uh, fast forward, you have achieved a lot in your life uh, so far. Maybe it's not a lot to you. A lot is relative. Yes. But all right, after high school, uh, what did you do next? And did you know you wanted to do whatever you're doing today? So after high school, mm -hmm. 
what I remember is I did not get the cut off to go to the university. Mm -hmm. That was devastating for me. Mm -hmm. I really had wanted to go to university. Mm -hmm. And so, as most of us from the village do, we come mm -hmm. to Nairobi mm -hmm. to stay with relatives. Right. And I did a bit of hustling here uh -huh. and there. So is this uh, your first time in Nairobi at this time? Yes, I'd been uh. visiting on and off uh -huh. where you come to uh -huh. visit your aunt, but uh -huh. now I had come to s to stay mm -hmm. or rather to really look for work. All right. What I knew I did not want uh -huh. is I did not want to stay in the village. All right. Which neighborhood <laughs> was the first uh, which was the first neighborhood you lived in in Nairobi? Um I came to Buruburu. You came to Buruburu. Yes. Back then Buruburu was uh Buruburu. Was Buruburu. <laughs> yes, yes, back then. All right. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh what we were I I I did a bit of uh you know the door to door marketing you uh -huh. go giving out sampling sampling uh -huh. different people. Mm -hmm. That really helped me because I'd never known Nairobi you mm -hmm. get in a van you're dropped in Zimmerman mm -hmm. you're dropped in South B mm -hmm. go sampling people home uh -huh. by home so this helped you know the city yes and know different cultures of the city mm -hmm. the diversity the classes that exist so mm -hmm. you had a clear picture of Nairobi and you knew where you wanted to uh, yeah, to end and up. also getting to know people, some open for you doors, smiling, uh -huh. others are wondering what you're doing at their doors. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this was quite an experience for that you. It was. All right. Uh, do you consider yourself, did you consider yourse yourself as somebody who's good with people, with social skills back then? Then I was shy, uh -huh. but I needed to make some money. Uh -huh. So I would say it taught me uh -huh. because... What I say is there's no job that you don't learn something. Mm -hmm. I learned that when I'm, I'm going to that door, mm -hmm. I need to have a smile. Mm -hmm. I need to have uh, something quick and mm -hmm. that sounds interesting mm -hmm. so that the door is not slammed on my face. Mm -hmm. And even if it's slammed, mm -hmm. because I've got to go to the next door, uh -huh. I better... Y fix your face again. Yeah. All right. Gather myself together uh -huh. quickly. Uh -huh. All right, yes. so fix your face before you get to the next door. Yes. All right, but this taught you some some lessons. Yes. All right, at what point did you get to interact with USAID? Because this is quite a big deal, considering uh, what you guys were doing. And uh, I'm a typical Kenyan, the budget that you were working with. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How did so you get to work with USAID? Before we get to USAID, we uh -huh. have to pass through other routes that I passed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So uh, I eventually got a, a job in banking. Uh -huh. And I spent year, 10 years uh -huh. in the banking industry. Mm -hmm. um, and while there, I remember I said that I really felt bad I didn't go to university. Mm -hmm. The first thing I did when I landed at the bank mm -hmm. was find out how do I get education loans. Mm -hmm. So I started with uh, an associate diploma in banking. Mm -hmm. Those times we used to do them from UK mm -hmm. and your papers would be sent through post office mm -hmm. and you would post things back. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. That's how you get your results. Yes. So your paper is marked by uh, some English person. Yes. Uh, then it's sent back or you g they send the results back. Yes, by post office. All right. That's how it used to work. Mm -hmm. Long distance learning. Wow. Yeah, nowadays it's you just sit on your computer mm -hmm. and do everything. Your books have to be sent. You go to the post office. Anyway, it was, it was what we knew. So it wasn't hard. That mm -hmm. was was there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I eventually I got a degree, so mm -hmm. I was very pleased. Mm -hmm. I was like my peers now. Right. They took a little but bit before longer. you carry on, yes. I'd like to understand why did you pick a British university over a Kenyan one? Um, that time banking mm -hmm. was being offered by what was it called? Internet. Uh, I. It was offered from UK. Uh -huh. If you oh, really wanted to reason. do uh -huh. uh, an associate diploma in banking, mm -hmm. it you could only come from the UK. Mm -hmm. Kenya would only offer a certificate course. A certificate yes. course. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, after <laughs> uh, studying banking, you got your degree. You're so happy. Uh, yes. You've achieved uh, something that you wanted in your life. Yes. It's a step closer to your dreams. Yes. Yes. What next for you? Um, around that time, mm -hmm. I started feeling really restless. Mm -hmm. Is this all that is in banking? Mm -hmm. uh, is there something more I mm -hmm. could do? Um, I want variety. I want diversity. All right. What travel. was your What was your <laughs> JD like? What was your job description like? Oh, I was. In that makes you say, uh, "Is this all in banking?" I did 
banking let mm. me just put it this way i you know i i have friends who are still bankers all right all right, all right. <laughs> yes mm -hmm. banking can be very routine mm -hmm. if you're if you're a cashier have you you've you've you've, you've all met cashiers yes i've interacted so with some i'm related to some yes <laughs> all right you see every day you find them at that counter mm -hmm. from eight receiving, giving out to five yes from eight Exactly. Or from eight to four, and then after that, it's all about accounting in the in the bucket. Yeah, and the bucket is in the evening. Okay. So the whole day is receiving, giving uh -huh. out, receiving, giving out. Mm -hmm. You move from that department, you go to maybe another one called clearing. Uh -huh. And I'm talking about my day. I don't know whether it's it's become more interesting. Mm -hmm. You would find maybe somebody just stamping checks the whole day. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you recruited, you're a clerk in the beginning, mm -hmm. so you're stamping checks the whole day. Mm -hmm. You mo so I I it's it's very specialized, mm -hmm. let me put it that way. Right. So wherever area you're in, whether you're even in foreign currency, uh -huh. it's one routine. That is what you do something. every single day. Yes. So you got sick of this. But did you have experience <laughs> of frauds there while in banking? Frauds are there. All right. Yes. <laughs> That's the story for another day. Yes. I hope you didn't fall for the trap. <laughs> That's the story for another day. <laughs> That's the story for another day. <laughs> All right. Uh, at what point did you, uh, after after you quit banking, what did you do next now? I quit banking. Mm -hmm. I took, we call it VR, that is a early retirement uh, mm -hmm. hardship. Uh -huh. I invested all my money back to school. Mm -hmm. uh, I had thought, what I really need to do is work that has variety, work that has some travel, work that is different. Mm -hmm. So I went and did project management. Mm -hmm. And I came back to Kenya mm -hmm. thinking, you know, banks would be wanting to recruit me. Now mm -hmm. I'm a project manager with an right. MBA. All right. And shock on me, uh -huh. I'd go for interviews and mm -hmm. they tell you, oh, well, you've been out of the system for the last two years. And I'm thinking, what is that so important to do? I could learn it. Uh -huh. Anyway, it took a while to settle mm -hmm. back. And I, uh, that's when you start wondering, did I do the right thing? Mm -hmm. Your friends and relatives cannot sympathize with you. After all, you left a job. Mm -hmm. Now you're asking them to help you look for another one. Mm -hmm. So it took a while to settle back. Mm -hmm. I did um, other jobs mm -hmm. to as I looked for the job. Mm -hmm. Were they satisfying the jobs that you took? No, those were jobs to... To, 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 to bring bread uh -huh. as I look for the job. All right, to keep you... Yes. Uh -huh. But uh, what I always say is, any job you do, mm -hmm. there are always lessons mm -hmm. and there are always skills. Mm -hmm. Like the first one I did was actually volunteering. Mm -hmm. And I learned to write proposals. Mm -hmm. I learned to go for meetings mm -hmm. to, to talk about the proposals we have. Mm -hmm. And that was a great lesson that mm -hmm. I carried on when I eventually got that job. All right. So my yes. first lesson <laughs> of the day, whatever you are in every job that you do, make yeah. sure you live with something. Exactly. Learn something. Yes. At least. And do mm -hmm. it. Uh -huh. Shingo Pande. Uh -huh. Go there. You, you've you agreed to work. Go mm -hmm. work. Uh -huh. And learn. Uh -huh. Because these are, these are transferable skills. Mm -hmm. They will carry you through life. Mm -hmm. You remember, I went through door to door. I mm -hmm. learned... When somebody says no to you, it's not personal. Uh -huh. After all, they don't even know you. All Move right. on. Move on. Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, after hustling for around two years, uh -huh. I eventually got uh, to work with USAID-funded projects. Mm -hmm. And I have worked with them for the last eight years. Did you apply for these jobs? Of course I did. All right. <laughs> yes. Uh, did you go for interviews? Of course I did. All right. I hear they're very vigorous. That they are. Uh -huh. But life prepares you for these things. Mm -hmm. You see, in the very beginning, I mm -hmm. knew where I wanted to go to work. Mm -hmm. I went back to school. Mm -hmm. And even as you get these jobs, let me tell you, in UK, I, mm -hmm. I pangard uh, supermarkets. Mm -hmm. Even now, when I go to supermarkets, I tilt things. All right, I know how they're supposed <laughs> to be tilted. All right. <laughs> so it's not, it's not a case of OCD or something. <laughs> it's just uh, something that you picked up. Uh, something Maybe you it could be. Uh -huh. In your line of duty, yeah, mm -hmm. because it to me it, it it helped me be more detailed. Uh -huh. And as you talk about the interviewing process and all mm -hmm. that, it is more detailed. Just because I pangard uh, mm -hmm. jam and uh, biscuits, mm -hmm. 
it means you 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 learn to see details mm-hmm. in in the physical items and also in your life so when mm-hmm. you're applying for these jobs mm-hmm. you become very detailed in trying to find all the to transferable skills you're bringing to mm-hmm. that jd mm-hmm. yeah so. All right. so somebody who has traveled before we talk about uh your post mm-hmm. uh after 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 you got the job at usa um I'd like to know, as somebody who has traveled, how important is it to expose yourself to different cultures and the rest of the world? Do you think it's something important that people should actually save for or plan for? I think so. Uh-huh. Number one, it, you know, there is that's why he's saying something about if you don't travel, you, you think your mother is the best cook. <laughs> you think so? Lesson number two. <laughs> If you don't travel, you always <laughs> think your mom is the best cook. I like nothing that. against mom. All right, no, nothing against mom. I know mom is watching. But I have traveled, mom. You're still the best. Great. Uh-huh. But it, 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 let me give you a, as you talk about Katya, some some something I learned when uh-huh. when I got to UK. Uh-huh. Uh, that's the time before Michoke Rosia on on Matatus, mm-hmm. and I was on Oxford Street, uh-huh. and there was a bus. Mm-hmm. And when the bus stopped, I ran uh-huh. and held the door. <laughs> and I'm like, I am the first. <laughs> Walked in and sat. Uh-huh. And then people just, I realized later, people just sat back. I mean, they, they stood back. Uh-huh. I mean, this is a crazy woman. Uh-huh. Let me through. Culture and show. then because they are filed up in a, in a queue, uh-huh. they just walked in. Uh-huh. and In it, order. Exactly. All right. It's it's I'm very black. Uh-huh. I, I mean the bra- the blushing I must have been doing that. I mean you feel hot. Uh-huh. <laughs> what did I do? It's quite embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And uh-huh. then here is it means people follow order in uh-huh. other places, uh-huh. and you start thinking this looks better than the one I elbow my yes. way through. It's more reliable, more convenient. It saves a lot of time. Uh, you save yourself from pickpockets as well. <laughs> yes, if they're there. <laughs> if they're there. <laughs> so uh, this is something that you learned in your first trip. So exposing yourself to other cultures, to different parts of the world, it's very important. It it's is. something people should plan for at least. Yeah. Uh-huh. And just to add to that, mm-hmm. uh, when you say that, what I know is people think travel is very expensive. Mm-hmm. It's not. Mm-hmm. It is planning early. Mm-hmm. Planning like uh, I know there are very few Kenyans who know what they'll be doing in August Mm -hmm. including myself (laughs) apart from celebrating my birthday (laughs) (laughs) oh I think your birthday Uh right yes if you knew you wanted to travel August or September Mm -hmm. you start looking for tickets Uh now Mm -hmm. having a lot on Mm -hmm. the cheapest month uh, Mm -hmm. or on the cheapest uh, you know tickets Mm -hmm. you start thinking you don't have to stay on the high street Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, you're young, so you might know about things like coach serving. Mm-hmm. That you can actually stay with people, which is the best way because you're immersing yourself in people's culture. Uh-huh. So don't think about, I have to pay hotels. Uh-huh. Find people, stay in people's homes. Stay in people's homes. For free. We have Airbnbs as well. Yes. Uh-huh. So um, if we plan better, uh-huh. travel is not as expensive as we think it is. Mm-hmm. It is expensive because we buy the ticket last night. Last night. We want to go to a hotel. Exactly. Uh, we want to go to eat in the best restaurants exactly. in that particular yes. country. And if mm. you can afford that, still fine. That's still fine. But don't feel limited to travel mm-hmm. because of budget. That's mm-hmm. why they are called budget travels. All right. So travel is not for rich people. No. So, and it's important to travel. I would say it is because mm-hmm. it, it, it would teach you things that happen there. Mm-hmm. That, But I always say that also makes you appreciate home. Mm-hmm. Yes. So much. Because home is still the best. Home is still the best. You'll <laughs> yes. still be home. All but right. Yeah. Back to USA. Yes. So your first uh, job description mm-hmm. at USA, what was it? I started as a logistics, a uh, training logistics, was it a manager officer, something like that. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, buddy, mm-hmm. it's good I did not know what I got myself into mm-hmm. because, you know, sometimes a data in life, you like, God, did I do all that? Mm-hmm. I would coordinate people in the East Af- East Africa and Southern Africa region to mm-hmm. come for trainings in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Every single week, mm-hmm. I would have a class of 25 people from 
minimum six countries mm -hmm. coming for training. Mm -hmm. That means you get them to agree, you invite them, you, you make them, you, you get to get the RSVP that they are mm -hmm. coming. If they say, like for Rwanda, that the government must give them authorization, you send letters to the government mm -hmm. so that they are authorized to come. Bureaucracy. You book mm -hmm. their tickets. If it's Rwanda, they have to travel in Rwanda here, so you book their tickets through Rwanda here. Mm -hmm. You get them here into our hotel for five day training mm -hmm. every single week for 13 consecutive weeks. Mm -hmm. That was my baptism by fire. Mm -hmm. And I think I go back to having learned some some skills in in detail in mm -hmm. uh, being very detailed mm -hmm. because people will call you on a sunday to tell you oh the ticket says they were to travel yesterday but uh they missed their flight and i'm like really, really you're in zambia you missed your flight what am i supposed to do <laughs> but again going uh -huh. back to being the people person mm -hmm. you always have to ask yourself what is it that you want to achieve it's not the bits that have to be done earlier mm -hmm. Bottom line, I want to say that my class was full. Mm -hmm. So whether on Sunday I have to call Kenya Airways and get and them to change you. Uh -huh. tickets, uh -huh. have uh, conversations with mm -hmm. uh, Fly 540 uh -huh. because we need our people to come. All right, and yeah. you you learn that next time I'll need to send the time in block letters, <laughs> the time and date in block letters, and uh, send it twice or thrice. So uh, you learn in the process as well. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, everything is a learning process, mm -hmm. Barry. Uh, I don't know whether anybody can say Nimefika uh -huh. in whatever area you're doing because mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that to digress, mm -hmm. my, my thesis in for MBO was learning organizations. Mm -hmm. And learning organizations are made of learning people. Mm -hmm. So in everything you do, it's always, is there another better way I would have done it? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's always learning. And now this week, yeah, I call Barry and you've seen your ticket is for midnight. Right. Midnight means tonight, not tomorrow night. <laughs> no, all right. <laughs> yes. I understand. So after this, uh, after this particular uh, role in logistics and everything, uh, did they give you a different role for after these 13 weeks? You said 13 weeks. Yeah, 13 mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. Then we were done with the trainings. Yeah, so I got to, to also be in charge of procurement. Mm -hmm. Then I moved on to to be the technical project manager, meaning mm -hmm. that I was managing country managers mm -hmm. in the Eastern and Southern Africa regions. Mm -hmm. And uh, should I be modest? No, no. Uh, uh. we are told that you should also see the things you've done. Mm -hmm. I think having been really good at what I've done in the past, mm -hmm. it helped me get the role of the, the technical project manager mm -hmm. because now I'm managing country managers to manage their work better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I would call it the quality assurance manager. All right. Yeah. I like that. So uh, looking at uh, this brief right here, I see uh, until September 2018, uh, you were the, count the country director and Eastern African regional manager for, oh, for US dollars, uh, 22 million. Mm. This is a lot of money. And uh, having talked to my friends in the NGO world, uh, most of their bosses are foreign. Mm -hmm. And then the other roles are given to, to locals. Yeah. But the overseer is always a foreigner. Mm. And uh, one of the things they've told me uh, is the reason for this. Mm. Uh, they don't trust our integrity so much. Being at the top mm. and uh, serving in your capacity and managing such an amount of money mm. for a project. What can you tell us about this? Well, I would say, uh, Barry, it's not always about the money. It's mm. about the people. Mm -hmm. uh, this project was a youth project, mm -hmm. Mandela Washington Fellowship, which I'm very proud of. It mm -hmm. was a youth project. Mm -hmm. We were taking youth through a leadership program. Mm -hmm. I have always said, and even my colleagues would attest. I've mm -hmm. always said, every dollar that you save, mm -hmm. bring somebody else on board. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's about somebody's money. Uh, the, for, by the US, it is called from the American people. Mm -hmm. That money is from taxpayers. Mm -hmm. People who don't even necessarily have as much money, mm -hmm. but they are willing to give to this project. Mm -hmm. So. How dare you go take that money and put it in your pocket? Because you know what it means? Mm -hmm. When I take that money, mm -hmm. somebody deserving 
mm -hmm. not get into the project. And mm -hmm. at least I have a job. Uh -huh. I have access to other other uh -huh. opportunities. Opportunities and resources. Uh -huh. Now, this is the other version of me in the village mm -hmm. that is really trying to get out of a village. Mm -hmm. And I eat her money. All right. So being somebody who understands the story, maybe it gives you a different picture mm -hmm. altogether. But it would does. you agree that uh, Kenyans have been notorious before of uh, squandering uh, money from donors. Now that is putting me in a whole <laughs> new perspective, <laughs> buddy. Right. Uh, but I think uh, I, I um, it's yes and no, mm -hmm. but um, I think I'll leave it to the researchers who've done and put facts <laughs> together. Because right. if I answer, you might ask me to give you percentages. Well, give, uh, give me facts. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's something that happens, yeah. uh, but it's something that we discourage uh, at Y254, mm -hmm. at Y in the morning. We're encouraging mm -hmm. uh, in t integrity as much as possible. So moving on swiftly, I saw you worked um, uh, with, um, you worked on a food security project. Yes. Uh, how was this experience first? And where was it in particular? The, it was in uh, the eastern and southern part of Kenya because mm -hmm. th these, these are regional programs. Mm -hmm. The experience, I'll tell you, when I, when I was running away from the village mm -hmm. was to run away from farming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All I knew is I have to leave. This uh -huh. is not the life I want to lead. Uh -huh. And shock on me, I get myself in a in a food security um, mm, program. Proj program. Mm -hmm. And being aware of the of the needs mm -hmm. actually makes you start looking at farming at as a, a whole different um, with a whole different aspect mm -hmm. that we need food mm -hmm. and we are eating all the time. Mm -hmm. That. Uh, you realize that people get stunted, mm -hmm. I mean children, by mm -hmm. age five mm -hmm. because of, of lack of nutritious food. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's really a sorry state. And mm -hmm. some of it is around uh, policies that mm -hmm. policies need to be put in place that allow food to move through the region, you know, freely. Mm -hmm. Um, other issues are around, you know, our cultural practices. Mm -hmm. I think um, if I'm if I'm from where we eat Gideri, mm -hmm. if I'm feeding my child with potatoes and rice, I'm doing really well, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. some is uh, lack of the food, mm -hmm. or others is also... Lack uh, of the knowledge. Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. So uh, you are focusing on uh, the two. Yes. Uh, giving knowledge. Yes. To people who like it, yeah, and also giving food to those who like it as well. Not so much giving food, mm -hmm. but uh, sensitizing people that uh, they they could have better farming methods. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They could uh, diversify what they mm -hmm. grow, mm -hmm. and also uh, lobbying the government right. on on the policies. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in Tanzania, I remember we were working around. You're taxing the farmers so much mm -hmm. that they are not making much. Uh -huh. So those kinds of um, or, or working through the the AU framework. AU mm -hmm. has a framework for mm -hmm. for agriculture for the next. Uh, they've been there, I think, now for the last fourteen years or so. It's being implemented. Yes. Are we feeling the effects without knowing? Maybe. You are. Uh, all right. You are. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely. All right. So it's another case of teaching them how to fish rather than giving them fish. Yes, hundred percent. All, right. all right. So uh, the reason I delved into food security mm -hmm. is because uh, the president has the big four agenda, mm -hmm. and uh, one pillar is uh, food security. Mm -hmm. So as a professional, mm -hmm. as somebody with experience, mm -hmm. what would be your approach for food security as a for a country such as Kenya? with different climatic climatic patterns in different areas, geographical areas? What I know, Barry, uh -huh. is a lot of research has been done. Uh -huh. Some has been implemented, mm -hmm. some has not. Uh -huh. But what I also know is about the, the youth dividend in this country. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of youth, mm -hmm. and the farmers are, are, become, are, are growing older. Uh -huh. So... They are farming less. Uh -huh. You will go home and your mom will tell you, ah, no, I'm not farming the five acres anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm farming two acres now. Uh -huh. Then you will find other farmers have decided, you know, with this climate change and all, mm -hmm. I will sell my place. We People are building high-rise uh -huh. buildings. Uh -huh. I'll real just estate. Exactly. Uh -huh. I'll make my money from real estate. Uh -huh. And, I mean, I don't have to hustle anymore. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Food is a reality. We need food. Mm -hmm. So for me, is also asking, uh, uh, putting it together with the youth. Mm -hmm. What are the youth doing around food security? Mm -hmm. And that is one of the biggest areas mm -hmm. that can employ them. That is 
that should be the biggest question what are the youth doing towards food security yeah so the youth should be incorporated in this particular plan you think and I, they are incorporated right. they are incorporated <laughs> yes in what sense as the consumers <laughs> or as the producers <laughs> i think in all ways but uh -huh. what i've always also thought about is sometimes you really do not need to to be so cognizant of what the, the agenda four says mm -hmm. or what are the SS, what are they called, SDGs uh -huh. saying. Mm -hmm. Point is, you in, I, I'm imagining me in my village, uh -huh. if I've decided I can do agriculture, hopefully uh -huh. not the me who was running away from it. Uh -huh. The you if with you more knowledge exactly. and uh, exposure and uh, the rest of the <laughs> compliments, yes. all the adjectives. All right. yes. uh -huh. I should be looking in in that space that we live in in my community mm -hmm. what can you can we do mm -hmm. because in my time i thought that I, the problem with agriculture is i have to go till the land mm -hmm. there are many things you can do mm -hmm. nowadays everybody um, has some gadget and internet from very early mm -hmm. as a youth who's come to university and studied let's say software engineering or something mm -hmm. is there an app you could develop mm -hmm. that maybe could show prices farmers could go to see prices mm -hmm. um maybe for pesticides mm -hmm. what is in short what is it that your community needs Need. don't right. apply don't go do the app and come to tell them this is what you're going to use uh -huh. what is it that they you need? understand the needs of exactly. the people first yeah so what i'm getting from you is that uh, in whatever field that you are in uh, from whatever village that you're coming from, uh, coming to th uh, uh, the University yeah. of Nairobi, yeah. for example, yeah. whatever you're studying, yeah. there's something you can do in that particular field towards food security. Exactly. Because remember we talked about uh, transferable skills? Mm -hmm. uh, because I think the other thing we have is we, we, we don't take some of the skills we have. We take some of the skills we have for granted. Mm -hmm. We don't see how we could transfer them to different aspects. Mm -hmm. Like now what we're talking about farming. Mm -hmm. You might have come to university and studied marketing. Mm -hmm. But because you studied marketing, you haven't thought, you know what, in my, in my community people grow mangoes. Mm -hmm. If I collect his, 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 mm -hmm. I will be able to sell this mm -hmm. to some tracker mm -hmm. at a good price. Uh -huh. So your marketing does not have to keep you tamaking in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. There is something you could do around the marketing where uh -huh. you come from. All right. I get that. Mm -hmm. So just understand the needs of your people. Exactly. All yeah. right. This is where we, I think we can call it the multi -dis disciplinary approach to food security yes where everybody <laughs> it's about what you're doing yes not what the president has planned yeah because that's why there is a whole value chain mm -hmm. in, in agriculture All right so it's about you finding where your niche is in that mm -hmm. value chain mm -hmm. and you can be the farmer you can be the one who aggregates you can mm -hmm. be the seller you can be the transporter mm -hmm. you can be the app uh -huh. person uh -huh. There is a whole chain. There's a whole chain. Yes. In the yeah. in the agricultural yeah. industry. So don't feel like uh -huh. uh, farming is all about me going into the uh -huh. chamber with the hole and sweating the whole day. Uh -huh. yes. All right. I'd like to go to another aspect uh, okay. as we as we wind up. Mm -hmm. Another aspect of your of your of your of your skill set. Yes. Uh, so you're a life coach mm -hmm. and uh, take me through this. How how, how is what, what is life coaching, Prissy? So life coaching, uh -huh. I will start by telling you that. Uh -huh. After doing eight years mm -hmm. in project management, mm -hmm. I really started feeling restless. Mm -hmm. I, I felt I've done food security, I've mm -hmm. worked with the youth. Mm -hmm. What do I do with this phase of my life? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, I found out that I've been doing mentorships, I've mm -hmm. been doing coaching in some mm -hmm. haphazard manner. Mm -hmm. And so I went again back to school, studied mm -hmm. coaching professionally. Mm -hmm. And what I do mm -hmm. as a coach mm -hmm. is basically meet people who are restless, meet people who are having issues with their life. For instance, mm -hmm. you could be saying, I want to change careers. Mm -hmm. You could be thinking, um, I, I want, I don't feel like I'm advancing in my career, mm -hmm. or this is not where I should be at, mm -hmm. or I can't seem to balance my life. Mm -hmm. Or you're just feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Every day you wake up, there are so many things to do, and you mm -hmm. cannot prioritize. Mm -hmm. So. As a coach, I work with people mm -hmm. to ask, th through questioning, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. to find out, to help them find clarity mm -hmm. 
in any issue of their life. So that the best mm. approach is getting to understand uh, the needs uh, of this particular person. Yes. So there's nothing like a group life coaching. <laughs> there are there, but uh -huh. that is general. Uh -huh. But the, there is individual coaching uh -huh. because this this really drills into you because mm -hmm. we need to find goals mm -hmm. and timelines for what it is that you want to do. Right. Group coaching uh, also applies, especially uh -huh. in whatever in organizations where again there is maybe a marketing goal mm -hmm. to, to, to be arrived at. All right. Yeah. Masi is a blogger as well, life coach. She has experience in, uh, in food issues, food security issues. Uh, so maybe you can share with them your blog and your social media handles so they, ca they can interact with you after this because uh, I feel like th we have left a lot out. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, your camera is number four. All right, so uh, I'm very proud to, to be becoming a blogger at mm -hmm. my, I call myself a woman of a certain age. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, my, my articles can be found at massiesfireplace.com. Mm -hmm. I am on uh, Facebook on Massey's Fireplace mm -hmm. and on Twitter mm -hmm. at Massey Myro. Mm 